Welcome to Fine Scale Modeler Weekly. We take off this episode with a brand new airliner kit from a new Ukrainian manufacturer. That's right, it's X scale with a 1 144th scale DC 832. This is one of the early short body versions of the Douglas jetliner built for transcontinental operations. This kit features decals for a single Swiss Air aircraft. Marked by fine recessed panel lines, door frames, and vents, the fuselage halves omit open cabin windows using decals instead. The windshield is molded into a section of the fuselage, making inserting and blending it easy. Masks are provided for the windshield and wheels. The thin wing trailing edges will need a little cleanup to remove a sawtooth molding artifact. The inserts for the engine pylon fairings on top of the wings and inserts for the lower halves of the wings, tail planes, and vertical tail will need careful filling and probable rescribing of the pretty surface detail, since the separations don't fall on natural seams. The kit has a nicely detailed cockpit featuring the rear bulkhead, five seats, consoles, instrument panel, and engineer station. The engines are mini works of art with nacelles and rear bodies, single part intakes, front fans and rear sections, stator blades and resin fluted nozzles. The instructions indicate optional parts are given for the rear of the engines. We think to pose the thrust reversers deployed. The landing gear legs are finely molded and the wheels have good hub detail on one face and brakes on the other. Printed with minimal carrier film, the decals give the delivery scheme for a single Swiss Air aircraft, including optional doors with and without the contrasting outlines. This is a sharp freshman offering from X-Scale, and I personally can't wait to see how it goes together. Exciting stuff. Look at what you just did. Nice. <laughs> that was extremely funny. <laughs> the next kit from Italeri is one of the Italian manufacturer's Esci re-releases. It's a 124th scale Volkswagen Golf, this one in German police markings from the 1970s and 80s. The sharply molded body has good door and hatch outlines, trim and rain gutters. The separate hood has interior structure and covers a passable replica of the Gulf's four-cylinder power plant with transmission, belts, sump, head, and radiator. It slips into the underside and the front and rear suspension with steel wheels and Pirelli tires. The interior is platform style with separate seats, dash, console, controls, and sides that could benefit from bulking up the armrests and window cranks. A single insert fills all of the windows, and there is a rotating beacon for the roof and separate lenses for the tail and headlights. Cartograph decals supply the instrument cluster for the dash, badging and trim, and markings for a single police car in green and white. This doesn't look like a difficult kit, and the markings will make it pop on the shelf. Here are some Austria books that caught our attention. Starting with Book 127 in the Dual Series, U.S. Destroyers versus German U-Boats, The Atlantic, 1941-45. Typical of other books in this series, this 80-page softcover starts by detailing the combatants with illustrations and descriptions, then examines individual combats with maps and photos. In a timely book, given the ongoing war in Ukraine, Mark Galotti looks at Russia's five-day war, the invasion of Georgia, August 2008. Part of Osprey's Elite series, the 64-page book focuses on the soldiers in the conflict, including Georgian and Russian forces. The book chronicles the invasion, day by day, and assesses the aftermath. From the new Vanguard series, we have Soviet tanks in Manchuria, 1945, the Red Army's ruthless last blitzkrieg of World War II. Using photos and illustrations, William E. Highstand examines how Soviet armor crushed the Japanese army in Kwantung in a matter of weeks. Speaking of lightning campaigns, Book 36 in the Air Campaign series, South China Sea 1945, looks at Task Force 38's bold carrier rampage in Formosa, Luzon, and Indochina. It charts Admiral Halsey's plan to sweep through the South China Sea with aircraft carriers to disrupt Japanese supply lines and hamper its war machine. Many of these books detail lesser-known battles that provide interesting information if you're looking for something different to model. Maybe a different diorama? Something cool? Diorama? Diorama? Model paint manufacturers are always offering new products that make finishing models just a little easier. Ammo by Mig Jimenez sent us a couple of its newest scenery products to take a look at. Acrylic paints for concrete and asphalt. These can be applied and spread on any material, providing a realistic, varied texture. 
They are a quick and easy solution for recreating these types of surfaces. They're the perfect thing if you're building a street or road diorama. Finally, here's Ravel's 125th scale Kenworth W900 dump truck. This tooling of the classic Kenworth conventional truck has been around for several decades. But this is only the second time it's been released as a dump truck. The cabin hood are each one part, and there's a pretty good looking engine, as well as plumbing, suspension, frame, drivetrain, and interior. Chrome parts supply the wheels, grill, steps, horns, fuel tanks, bumper, and lights. Michelin branded tires and the clear parts round out the basic truck. The dump bin comprises the bottom with framing, inner and outer walls that give the sides proper dimension, and telescoping cylinders that should leave the hydraulic ram and hence the bed movable. Sharply printed decals supply faces for the dash, placards and badging, reflectors and warning strips for the bed, black and white stripes for the cab, a choice of three company names and license plates from Washington State and Yukon Province. This is one of those kits that just screams to be built and weathered to look like the many hardworking trucks you see on the road every day. And you could use those Ammo by Mick Jimenez products to put it on the road. That's a really good idea. That may be your next modeling project, Kendra. I think it might be. Look for reviews of the DC-8, Golf, and Kenworth on FineScale.com. Where you can find hundreds of other reviews, how-to stories, videos, and more by your favorite FSM authors. FineScale Modeler Weekly is brought to you by HobbyZone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard-to-find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. So there was this really interesting tool that I learned about some some many years ago um, from editors who were working for beading and jewelry titles. They were called wax pencils. And what they would do is they would use these wax pencils to pick up sequins or small beads, small chain links, and then put them together and then do this repetitively, right? And what those wax pencils allowed them to do is pick up these small parts, place them quickly, and just do it over and over again without fatigue. And I thought, that is a great tool. Well, the thing is, is that, as with many things, you'll see it and it's like, all right, other things come in, and I sort of forgot about it. Until recently, when a friend of the magazine, a contributor and a reviewer, Chuck Davis, he reminded me about wax pencils because he was using them to pick up small parts and then place them onto his models. And I said, Chuck, I'd forgotten about these things, but they are awesome, and I immediately brought some in to my workshop. I wanted to share those with you and show them, show you how they could be useful. Here's a wax pencil from Green Stuff World. I've sharpened this end with a knife, nothing spectacular there, and just kept the end a little bit flat for picking up the part. So the first thing we're gonna do is dab in here with some plastic cement. We can do the same thing with super glue. So as you can see, these are actually pretty useful tools. Pick up really easily small parts. And again, you don't have to be using tension on tweezers or worrying about maybe dropping them. See this wax pencil is just gonna pick that part up and keep it right there. One thing that you're going to want to remember is that the end of this wax pencil is gonna get dirty. So that's an indicator of when you need to sharpen it, right? When it's not picking up the part anymore, time to clean that off. I, like I said earlier, I just like to use a, a knife. You can use a hand pencil sharpener as long as it has a large enough hole to accommodate the diameter of the pencil. Remember, this is paper, not wood. So it's just wrapped on there. So there's a chance when you are using the larger pencil sharpener that it might just peel this paper back. So that's why I just prefer to use the knife. We, it just so happens, sell 
these wax pencils from Green Stuff World at KohlenbachHobbyStore.com. So go ahead, stop there, and pick yourself up a set. They're definitely a useful tool for your workbench. Every time we go out to a convention or an event, a show, we talk to modelers and you're always excited to talk to us about you know, what we're doing in the videos. Especially those who are either new to the hobby or are coming back to the hobby after having been away for a while. You say to us, you know what, your videos, they've really helped us or they've really helped me. And I'm learning a lot and learning from videos from other people you know, on YouTube or elsewhere on the internet. What I don't think though that some of you understand is that Fine Scale Modeler was first a magazine, started in 1982. Right. And you know, we've been publishing uh, from Callback Media for 40 years. Yes, indeed. Six issues a year, print, and then we have the four digital DLCs for right. downloadable content. Exactly. Which are basically exactly the same as the print magazine, same kind of stories, all how-to information, the same stuff you expect from the magazine that you've been reading for however long you've been reading it. Right. 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, whatever. Or if you haven't been reading it at right. all. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> it's, there's, it's still there. It yep. is a resource that you can go and find. Now, if you visit finescale.com, that's our website. And that website is chock full of information, right? Um, we put how-to information out there. Well, actually, I mean, we put out, there's, there's a new story on finescale.com every day, right? It can be a review and we publish eight, 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 eight to 12, 12 a month. Eight, eight to 12, 12, yeah, kit reviews a month. Um, we also publish, sort of, I don't know, industry news, yep. right? That goes on there or, or hobby news, yeah. Or hobby news, what's happening out there in the, you know, just in the in the hobby world itself. And then a ton of how-to stuff also goes on, not just videos, but you know, how-to um, stories that you can read online or even download in PDF format. Yep, these great things we call snapshots which you can download and read. You can even print them out if you want and keep them, keep them right. in a binder, have them at your workbench whenever you need them, you can refer back to them. Right. So we just wanted to make you guys aware, in case you weren't, that there's a lot more material than just what you see on YouTube or you know, elsewhere on the web that's coming from us via video. There's a lot that you can take in and we would encourage you to go ahead and visit finescale.com and dive in. And don't forget, we also have a forum associated with FineScale, the yep. FSM forum, that has been running for decades. And it has all sorts of information from guys who have been there, guys and gals, who have been there for years talking about basics to advanced right. uh, subject matter, you know, from what kind of tools do we want to use and what kind of glue do we should you be using to you know, really in-depth scratch building or kit bashing information. Uh, just a wealth of information. We really, we are really happy about the, uh, our members on the forum and everything that they've done for the hobby itself and for Fine Scale Modeler in general. They're always willing to answer questions. If you've got something posted up there, you'll get a response. And they're just modelers, right. just like you, right? So please do visit finescale.com, visit the forum, and check out what we've got to offer. And if there's something that you would like us to talk about on the website or in the magazine, as far as that goes, feel free to drop something into the comments or email editor at finescale.com. Yeah, we'd really like to hear from you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye. And separate lenses. Lenzels. Is that what you had for lunch? Lenzels? <laughs> oh, I wish. Some lentil soup would be really good. Yeah. Speed. Speeding. Speeding of speaking. If I could. Try to try to minimize the flubbing there, of course, right? <clears throat> and telescoping cind <laughs> cinders. Cinders? <laughs> I told you not to have that liquid lunch. <laughs> to put it on the road. Nice idea. Why don't you get on that? I will. Okay.
Look for, sorry. Nice idea. I think you just found your next modeling project, Ken. Kendra. I... Ken. 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 <laughs> Ken. 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 Kendra. Okay, Barbie. Ken. Ken. I'm going to do the Max Headroom thing. Ken. 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 Kendra. South China Sea, 19, let me try that again because I sounded odd there. South China Sea. Is this supposed to be easy? Or maybe it's not. I don't know. Just. <laughs>